can back stretches actually help you with your lower back pain or sciatica? Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk through these four different options that you've got for taking pressure off your spine, off the discs, off the causes of maybe those sciatic symptoms or back pain in general, and how you can get the most out of these devices and also avoid some of those really common pitfalls and mistakes that actually result in you feeling worse after using these things. That and much more, let's get started. This video is gonna be packed full of content. We're gonna do some demos with the spine to show you exactly what we're talking about. We're gonna talk through each one of these and how specifically you can use it and the common mistakes demonstrated as well. So if you are short on time, skip ahead to the relevant part. Maybe you wanna see us demo the towel, or maybe you wanna see us demo the dinner roll, whichever one it is, fast forward to the relevant part of the video, and that way you can come back and watch the rest at another time. Before we go any further, understanding who these sorts of devices are for is really important. We might recommend them to patients that have lower back problems in general, so that's just chronic back pain. It might be muscle spasm in the lower back. It might well be that they've got some more severe cases, such as degeneration, stenosis. It might be disc bulges in particular. That's a really, really interesting one, all affecting down here in the lumbar spine. And we'll see later on some of the videos, some of the, the um, stretches are, are more general. They're gonna focus to the lumbar spine in general. Others are going to focus a little bit more targetedly and commonly with those, we're going to try and target the lower lumbar discs, L45 and L5S1 discs, because those are the ones that are most commonly affected. And also, if we're slouching, slumping, etc., those are the ones that are gonna really flatten out. So that lower back is going to be most profoundly flattened there. So we want to use these back stretches to arch those specific segments because they're likely the cause of that sciatica or that where that little disc is being squashed. The next thing we want to understand is what specifically these devices are actually doing within our body, because that helps us understand how it works. So they act in a few different ways, and there's some slight nuances against, with some of them compared to others. So for example, the towel is going to be much more general than say the Denerol, or the, the mobilization of the uh, electronic version is going to be a little bit harder than the static version. But fundamentally, what they're all doing is they're putting an extension, so a backward bending, which unloads discs. Remember, many of us are rounded over, squashing the discs. It then also, because it pushes up with the pivot, it elongates the spine, and this takes pressure off the discs. It gently opens out these little spaces here as well where the nerves come out of, and that's why it's particularly useful if we've got any sort of disc-related stenosis, degeneration affecting the discs where they're being squashed all day. We have desk-based jobs where we're squashing them all day. That combination of both extension, returning the natural lordosis, because the spine should have a backward bend, with the axial stretching, the unloading of the discs is particularly useful, particularly effective and particularly powerful when it's done correctly. One of the interesting things about using back stretches versus other activities that maybe replicate extension only, a really common one of these is going to be the cobra position where we push up and arch the lower back. And people often say, oh, well, the cobra actually hurts me. Why is that? Quite often, it's because the spine is so flat and rigid that when we just push up, we don't actually get it to move. Remember that upward force I mentioned earlier that the, the, the towel and the other devices will push up through the spine? Well, they allow a fulcrum so they can focus on a section that we want to bend and then our body weight allows us to bend around that. That's a very important distinction. So if you're someone that has tried the cobra in the past, maybe you've been told to give it a go, I'll demonstrate it in a moment. Actually using these, although it sounds like it might be very similar, that important difference of providing the additional counterforce and the gentle stretching means that it's not just pure extension like a cobra position is. Let me show you one moment. So if you've done the cobra before, what essentially happens is we just pull up and we try and push and, and we're just relying on our weight here. This is at what's called an extension compression. I, it actually just makes all these holes where the nerves come out smaller. So if we've got anything like a disc bulge or sciatica, sometimes, although it's taking pressure a little bit off the disc by going into extension, it's not making these holes larger. When we use the towel or the other devices that we're gonna talk about here, because they're a fulcrum and they press up into the spine, they actually create that decompression so we don't get the closing of the exit foramen where the nerves come out of as much. So if we get into position as we're doing this and we kind of pop ourselves down and then we push up like so, what often happens, especially, and you might not come this high when you're starting off, but what often happens is that the pressure focuses at the lumbosacral junction and it can often be quite uncomfortable as we push up and we get maybe a sharp jolt of pain because we don't have that same stretch that we, that we really want to take pressure off the spine. We're just trying to bend backwards. And if you're someone that's been sat down in a desk all day, slumped over like so for long periods, that spine at the bottom part will be so stiff, 
It needs that extra push, that extra pressure, that extra focus of the force to actually get it to bend in a backward direction. It's so rounded all the time that it just doesn't want to go there. And that's why some of you guys will have tried the Cobra before and found it just makes you worse. Firstly, you've probably seen these and things like this, back stretches like this, advertised all over the internet, all over Instagram, social media, etc. One of the biggest problems and gripes I have with these devices is they are almost always marketed with some hypermobile dancer or gymnast who's bending backwards over them at the thoracic or thracolumbar section of the spine. And then it says, yeah, this is gonna help your lower back pain. That's not even the lower back, that's the rib cage. So you then, someone like me, or maybe even you, you're not hypermobile. You don't have a history of doing gymnastics since you were two and a half. You are a normal stiff office worker or you're doing other bits and pieces. You're just a normal person. You're not, you're not that flexible. And for those of you thinking, well, I'm hypermobile, many of you will not be that flexible even if you are hypermobile. Not to mention the fact that it's in the wrong position. So just bear that in mind when you do see some of these. Number one, a lot of the branded photographs are in the wrong position, not in the lumbar spine, firstly, and the models that are being used. So I'm gonna demonstrate this with you in a moment so you can actually see what it looks like on a real person that's not bending like a little rubber tube. I mentioned the positioning, and this is really, really important. We've got the thoracic spine, which is most commonly in the photos that you will see. I've got the towel and the back stretcher here just to show you guys first before I demonstrate it myself. Our lumbar spine is what we're targeting. So I've got this on the lower setting, but the apex of my lumbar curve, which is really the lower part of the lumbar spine, three, four, five, S1, this section here, the bottom green section, should be the bit that is over because that allows the weight of our bum to pull along the spine a little bit and we're putting extension through the correct part. We don't have extension. These joints actually in the lumbar thoracic, sorry, the thoracolumbar spine, they should actually be flat and then we have a kyphosis a little bit higher up. So if we're putting it here, we're putting it in the wrong position or we're not putting it in a position that's gonna help our lower back. So get it in the right position first. And often you'll find those two dimples at the bo bottom or base of your spine, the two bony bits. Those are these here you will see that those two bits are actually remarkably high up your body and your spinal joints don't start till about an inch above that. So we want to have it right in the small of the back, the little bit that's often arched when we lie on a flat surface. And that is the part that we want to be over the apex of the curve. If it's down here, we're actually potentially flattening the curve more. So that's something to think about. When we look at the towel, for example, it's exactly the same process, except you'll notice with the towel, because it's a little bit more focused, we really can target in to that three, four, five S1 segment, so you can see it's bending nicely without really getting in the way of the upper part of the lumbar spine or the thoracic spine itself. How you get into and out of the position is the most important thing. Now I'm gonna demonstrate this with the towel and with the back stretcher, there's not really too much to talk about. I'll go through the mechanical variation, which is going to be a little bit more interesting and how we're gonna potentially use that at the time. And then I'm gonna finish up talking about the den roll as well. So first and foremost, let's pop ourselves comfortably. You wanna be on a softish surface, so carpeted, or if you've got a hard floors like this, then use a mat, it makes it a little bit easier for you. Pop yourself onto your back now, if that is too difficult, for obvious reasons, maybe we've got a lot of back pain, start with yourself on your side like so. So get into this position, lower yourself first and foremost, then just roll onto your back. Have your towel already rolled up about this size here, so you don't need to do it while you're lying down more than anything else. And then all we're gonna do is, I mentioned a moment ago, those little bony bits on the base of your spine. The bottom of the towel is going to sit against those bony bits and then above, so towards the, the, the end of my head. And all we're going to do is engage our core. We don't want to round our back or anything like that. Engage the core, lift up as high as is necessary to get the towel in, pop it into position, and then simply lower our body back over the top of it like so. You might need to adjust. You saw me doing a small adjustment there. We're going to lie here now. Generally speaking, the belly button will be over the apex of the towel. That's a good check. For some of you, it might be a little bit off to one side or the other, but this is the position you can see now that the towel is arching my lower back. I can feel it arching my lower back and I would generally leave your knees up. We can, of course, straighten the legs if we want. That gets it a little bit more strong in terms of the pull, but some of you guys with really tight hip flexors might find that, again, causes a little bit of jarring. So this will be a more comfortable option for you. If you position your feet a touch wider apart, 
and you can let your legs roll in and that allows you to relax your lower body as well. Now, generally speaking, the timing for this is we would say around about two to five minutes and then get off. Sometimes you might wanna start off doing it for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then over time, you will find it becomes more and more comfortable. It is very common, especially those of you that have had back pain or sciatica for a long period of time. We've maybe got a long history of maybe some degenerative change. We've done the same sort of load squashing, sitting at a desk all day job for a long period of time. This can actually be a little bit uncomfortable when we do it for the first time. So that's something to bear in mind. And that can take a couple of weeks because think about it, those joints are almost, I use the term colloquially, but rusty, they're stuck in that unnecessary, unhelpful position, squashing down on all those structures. And doing this for the first couple of times, it takes a bit of time to ease it out and get it to go back to the direction that it wanted to go. So bear with it, do your best, and sometimes making that modification of doing it for a shorter period of time can make it more easy. There are two more modifications that we can use with the towel, and that is number one, some people find it easier to use a slightly smaller towel to start with, and others a slightly larger towel to start with, but do not use a foam roller. They roll all over the shop and you can't relax while you're in that position, plus they're way too hard. And if you haven't got a lot of fat tissue or muscle on your back, then the bones will press in and it'll be very uncomfortable. So once we've been on here for the necessary amount of time, we can then engage our core, hold our spine steady, and we simply imagine every joint in our body was fused and we just tip off to the side like so. Lie there for a few moments, maybe have a cushion here for support, when you feel ready, you can pop yourself up. What we do not do, and this goes for all of the other devices that we're talking about, is you do not finish your time and then simply lift your bum up. That is a great way to hurt yourself. Also, do not twist afterwards. That again is a great way to create an irritation. Now, chances are you're not gonna do any severe damage, but what you will do is you will irritate the facet joints. The facet joints are very sensitive structures and they will give you very sharp electric-like pain if you tweak them. Not a severe injury, but it will feel very sharp. So please avoid that. Don't cause yourself unnecessary harm when doing this. Fuse everything up very, very slowly. Roll over to the side. Give yourself a few moments and get up safely. With many of the back stretchers, we have a number of settings. I've got this on the lightest one. You can obviously increase that over time and that's something that I'll touch more on in a moment. So getting on and off these things is the most important thing. Firstly, pop yourself on your side and then roll onto your back like so. This just helps from reduce the likelihood of irritating yourself as you go to get into position. The next thing is we want the bony bits that we referred to earlier to be on the bottom side of here, not completely off because that means we're gonna be way too low, but on the bottom side as the apex curves away. And then a good check for once we're in position is that our belly button is directly over the top. That's a nice little cue. So what we do, engage our core, lift ourselves up as high as is necessary to slide it into position, and then we can bring it up and slowly lower ourselves back over it. Now, you can hopefully see on me, my bony bits, I'll find them for you, are around about here. My belly button is here, okay? I'm not all the way down here. This is stretching my rib cage. You can see my rib cage is at the apex. I can feel it, and if you tested this out, if you're not too uh, uh, acute at the moment, you'll actually see and feel the difference. This is doing nothing to my lower back. So I'll get back into the right position for you guys, and then you're really gonna hold it here. Now you can hold it, there we go. You can hold it here for you know two, three, four, five minutes at a time, and then get off. The dismount, which I'll go through in a moment, is very, very important. If you find that it's difficult to get off or you're struggling, then always try shorter periods of time. Even 20, 20 seconds or so can be a good option to start off with. And then when we finish, we fuse everything up tightly and we imagine all of our spinal joints, our hips, our knees are all fused and can't move. And then we just fall off to the side. Nice and easy to do. We've got a pillow. We can rest that underneath our heads. You could always pop something between the knees as well. Give yourself a moment here. Don't jump up and go and get the do let the dog in from outside or get the doorbell. Just wait here for a moment and then pop yourself up safely. The most important thing when, we're, when it comes to getting off these things, if I just put myself back on again, is that we do not just lift our bum up and pull out. That can be very problematic. Much like we mentioned for the towel example, it can irritate some of those joints. Do not do that. Now we get onto the electronic lumbar traction device. Now this is a little bit more um, dynamic. And the one nice thing about this particular device is that 
The others are great because they put that stretch. This creates a bit of a pumping and you can use the controller here. There's gonna be a full review of how to use this specific device, all the different features and bits and pieces, but I'm just gonna talk in this video about the mechanism of actually providing traction to your lower back as, as a means of um, enhancing the stretch through those lumbar discs in particular. So if you're interested in that video, check a link above my head uh, for, for more on that particular video. So. The positioning on this one is exactly the same as the others. More so like I would say the lumbar uh, back stretcher that we've just been through in that we want those bony bits to be about here, not completely off the bottom. I'm going to have to slide it in from the other side just because it's plugged into the mains. I can't put it in this way. So the same thing is going to apply. We're gonna pop ourselves on our back. By the way guys, with this device, do not do it without a t-shirt on because these bits are metal and if you've got a bit of a sweaty back, you've had a hot day, whatever it is, that's not gonna feel very good for you. I can assure you of that, ask me, because I know. So, lift your bum up, wearing a t-shirt, and slide it into exactly the same position. We'll get ourselves. this is a little bit easier to place in some regards. Now, this device does some other stuff, heating, vibration, EMS, all sorts of bits and pieces, but I'm just gonna be talking about the traction here. And all we're gonna do is exactly the same. I actually found with this one, you can have the legs out, it works a little bit more nicely, and then, I'm gonna lie here, and I would say you could spend around about two, three, four, five minutes again doing this, or you could just do reps. And this has a nice little button here where you can just press, it does make a little bit of noise, and all it's gonna do is it's elevating up, increasing the upward movement, which creates that stretching through my spine. You will start to feel that as it reaches the top. It'll slow down the rate at which it's doing it as it does get to the very top. So you just have to bear with it. You can probably hear it working now. You do need a reasonably firm surface for this one. And now you can feel it just gently stretching out the lower back a little bit more. That's the top. So I let go, you might hold it here for a moment or so, and then you can press the button and it'll release it all the way back down. You might see me dropping down again, and then we can repeat another repetition. So again, pressing the button. And the nice thing about this, you can just control it from here and add in some of the other, device, other um, things that it does from this little remote control let it rise up, and then when it gets to the top again, I can let it deflate after a few seconds of hold. The real important thing about this one is that I can actually oscillate the degree of stretch within my spine. So if I just leave it up here for a moment, I can actually, as it's pushing up, like the other devices do, they create a stretch between the discs, as well as that extension. What I can do here is by pushing up a little bit more, I can open it out a little bit more, and then put it back down again. Open it out more and put it back down again. One of the things we used to do clinically was IDD, spinal decompression, which is a large device, which essentially the patient is strapped onto and creates that stretching, particularly used for cases of sciatica, slip discs, etc. This is a way, it seems, that you can somewhat replicate that kind of thing. The towel, the back stretcher, the denarol that we're talking about in this particular video, we um, can use those to create that stretch and create that movement, which is absolutely fantastic. This just allows us to do it in a way that is repetitive and articulatory. So if I can find the charger again, we can let ourselves back down again, and we've created a little bit of a pumping mechanism. You might do something like five, 10, 15 reps, something like that over the course of a couple of minutes as a means of just articulating your spine. Say you've had a hard gym session or a long day at the office. So this is the one of the devices that you can actively do a little bit more with. That being said, it's exactly the same as all of the others. When we finished, especially if we've done a little bit more, we fuse everything up, hold our spine nice and steady, and roll off to the side. Have a little bit of support, and, and possibly something between your, between your knees as well, and just rest there for a few moments before you get up. So we're on to the last of these back stretches, the Denerol. This is something that you won't really come across too often. You have to be prescribed it by a clinician. You have to do this in alignment with x-rays. You're typically, if you were to be prescribed one of these, it would be after maybe seeing an osteopath or a chiropractor. Other professionals are not really going to go into the detail with these, but you'll see here the ridge 
which we're placing the spine over is much, much more focused. Very, very important because this allows us to target a particular segment about which most of the extension-based force can occur and most of the decompression force can occur. With these, you would typically be using them for 10 to 20 minutes, targeting 20 minutes ideally, and that achieves a degree of creep in the ligaments. Now, we have a video up here which goes through patient examples or a specific patient example in both the lower back. It also goes through one in the neck in terms of what is achieve, achievable, sorry, in terms of changing the lordosis of the lumbar spine and improving the curve. I'm not gonna go through that in the detail on this video. I'm just gonna show you guys how it can be used to achieve probably the strongest out of all of these stretch, the most targeted stretch, specifically through, I would say, the alpha 5 and now 5S1 regions of the spine. So let's get it out of the way and get started. So exactly the same thing, but you can see this is a lot higher. So I'm gonna pop myself on my back like so. I'm gonna target the L4-5 region. So again, I'm gonna be locked in here and lift up, spine nice and steady like we've mentioned on all of the other ones. This one is much more focused and you will feel it as being a little bit more uncomfortable. And here I can just relax in this position. You can see that it allows, it, it's more visual for you guys hopefully, that you can see it actually putting a little bit more arch through the spine. And this is very, very focused. Now you would just lie on here. Some people will use these for maintenance purposes in the same way in which we've recommended the towel and the back stretches of the other ones that we reviewed in this video. But here it is very, very strong and you simply relax here. You would only use these devices if you've been given them from a qualified practitioner and you can't really buy these um, online very easily. They're very difficult to get here in the UK, maybe a little bit easier in the US, um, but it is difficult to get hold of these devices because they are used much more clinically than the other devices that we've talked about here today. One of the questions that we often get on videos like this where we talk about these back stretches, the towel, um, also another one we did on the neck cloud that we link up here if, you, if you've got issues with your neck, um, is that how long can I do this stretch be it the other ones that we've reviewed in this video or the next stretch, um, to get change in the spine. These devices are the only ones where you've actually got research which shows how long and how much change you can actually achieve. Things like the towel, the neck cloud, the others, there's not at the time of shooting this video research which says you will make this much change in this time frame. With these, from experience, in around about a three to four month period, providing other bits are done as well, um, you will make around about a 10 degree change increase in the lumbar curve. Uh, but again, you need to have imaging to actually be able to see what's going on and then use this in accordance with that imaging to do it most effectively. Now, I've been on here talking to you guys for a little while. Getting off is again, probably the most important with this one because it's the strongest, especially if you were using it for a longer period of time, like we mentioned. We brace everything. We do never lift our bum off here unless we want to get into a good bit of trouble. We brace everything and we roll off to the side, same with all the others. Pillow, maybe if you want to, something between the knees as well. So, some of you guys might be stuck in this position because I haven't shown you how to get up yet. It goes without saying, if you're more acute, do this close to a bed, go to a, uh, close to a chair, so you've got something to grab hold of when you are getting up. But it's important that we've just done something to extend our lumbar spine to provide neutrality to the lumbar lordosis. If we just get up and round our lower back, as sometimes you will feel the urge to do so, we are going to undo the good work we've done. So we want to get up in a sensible way. Giving yourself a few moments can be really, really helpful, and that's you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds. And then we can use this arm and maybe some support to pop ourselves up sideways first. This way I can keep my spine reasonably square. From here, it's kind of up to you. You can either pop yourself all the way up and then use other supports to get yourself back to your feet, or you can switch over onto all fours, keeping the spine nice and neutral, so you're in this sort of position, and then walk your hands back in and get up from there using support as well. It really does vary, and it's up to you, but just make sure you get up in a slow and controlled manner whilst trying to keep your spine neutral. And you can always then spend a little bit of time walking around. You can always pop an ice pack right over the spine for two, three, four, five minutes at a time, no longer than that, directly over that lumbar spine to help you just take down any heat that's raised whilst your back has been in contact with that surface for that time period. Especially if you're someone who's got more severe and more acute, more current symptoms in the lower back or going down the leg, that ice after this can really be quite helpful. So I'd have that to hand as well. So we've covered all those different devices. The one we haven't covered, which we could potentially include here is would be a teeter table or an inversion table. There's a link up here to a video we did on that. Where you can learn more if that's relevant to you. 
For the products that we've reviewed in this particular video, there will be a link in the description where you can get yours if you are someone that's been wanting to watch a video before you go and buy one of these. So check those out if you are interested. Fundamentally, these devices can be used, whether it's a towel or whether it's a dinner roll or whether it's something in between that we've covered in this particular video as a mechanism for combating the stress, the compression that goes through our body on a daily basis and leaves us, in many cases, with things like disc injuries, with generation in our spine, specific areas, and with things like sciatica. It's just a healthy practice using this as a way of, like brushing your teeth. You do it every day because you use your teeth every day. We're compressing ourselves every day and to the degree we're doing activities like sitting at a desk all day or spending hours and hours in that seated position, then we should spend a little bit of time regularly unloading our spine. And these devices offer great options and ways in which you can do that from free in the case of the towel to spending a little bit more money and with having a little bit more guidance in some of the other examples too. So we normally recommend these sorts of devices, the towel being the one that we recommend to everybody. And that is something that you can do right now if you've got a lot of back pain, a lot of trouble as a way of taking pressure off that lower injured section of your lumbar spine, but it works as a lifelong healthy back practice. And I would really encourage you to start adopting it to your routine, whether you've got severe back pain caused by any number of different things, or whether it's something that is a little bit more minor. It really, really helps even if you're not feeling bad, to just take the pressure off those discs, as I've mentioned numerous times in this video. A lot of times people are looking through the internet trying to find that one thing that's gonna help them. And yes, this back stretcher video hopefully has been really helpful for you. And these exercises, or this mechanism for stretching your lower back, whether it's a towel or one of the other devices, is a great, a great way to keep your back healthy and to improve the stress and strain that builds up in that area. But you're missing strengthening if you just do this alone. There isn't just one thing that fixes it. We have to work on building the supporting structures for that lower back. And that is where strengthening programs come in. You must work on those so you can more effectively benefit from the work that you're doing on the towel or the other bits and pieces. For example, if you have completely weak and, and vulnerable lower back, no muscular support, and you jump on this towel, you're gonna to feel great. But then you get up and you're so wobbly, you've got so little support that your back gets injured again, and then you have to get back on the thing. Yes, doing it helps to decompress you, but you must get stronger, and I can't recommend that enough. If you do need a little bit more help with your particular back pain or sciatica, whatever the causes and diagnoses are, then we have our Back in Shape program, our community of awesome people from all over the world now who are working to strengthen their lower back. Whether they're starting off with more severe cases, having had surgery, having had injections, having slipped and bulging discs, or having other more severe causes of their back pain diagnosed, or whether they've got minor back pain, or they've had a history and they just want to be stronger in that area and they wanna do that in a safe and sensible manner, then that is the program for you. That's why our members stay with us. And you can definitely check out more about the premium membership program to Back in Shape up here or in the description if you are interested in learning a bit more about that. So this has been a really long video. We've covered a lot of different pieces. If you've made it this far through the video, thank you for watching. I do really hope it's been helpful for you. And if you have any questions about any of these bits and pieces, any of the things we've covered, any of the theory or any of the other bits we've done, then please do post in the comment section. We read and reply to all of your comments to help you guys as much as we can. And as always, give us a thumbs up if it has been helpful. If you know someone else who's been looking at these sorts of things, share it with them. And remember, you can always subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the latest videos and releases of the Back in Shape podcast every single week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.